Hello, my name is David Ridlin, and this is my performance, Aaron Burr, From Respect to Diplomat to Debatable Trader. The year is 1820. Behind me is the study of President Thomas Jefferson. Always being a lover of maps, he has one hanging on the wall behind him. George Washington. You startled me. Welcome to Monticello. I was just reading. It is my favorite pastime. Though I can't believe this was even published. It's hard to believe we won the war with George Washington in charge. The mail was just brought to me. Bill. Bill. Bill, Benjamin Franklin. Huh. Another letter about Aaron Burr. Seems that lately the only interesting mail I get is about Aaron Burr. It's hard to believe that in such a young country as the United States, such a controversial character could arise. From a revolutionary war hero to presidential candidate, from vice president to traitor. The character of Aaron Burr has always been conflicted and debated. There is also that incident with Alexander Hamilton. Do you remember that I was sent out of the country during the drafting of the Constitution? I returned, and then am forced by the aforesaid document to take Aaron Burr as my vice president. Upon fulfillment of that office, he assassinates Alexander Hamilton. That wasn't enough. Mr. Burr had to be conspiratorial, trying to invade the West and... Uh, New Orleans. The thing that kept not only myself, but the entire government going, was the loyalty of our fellow countrymen. From the Atlantic Ocean to the Western Territories, it has been our people that have preserved our endurance. I ought to start from the beginning, I suppose. Aaron Burr and I tied in the in, tied in electoral votes during the 1800 election for president. I was chosen by the House of Representatives as president, and under the Constitution, Aaron Burr became vice president. I dare say we became friends during that time. Aaron Burr ran for president again in 1804 and lost. Upon my re-election within that same year, Aaron Burr, Burr no longer held the office of vice president. He still maintained an honorable tone towards me. I never sensed any hostility towards myself or my administration. Due to Alexander Hamilton's slanderous efforts against him, Aaron Burr lost an election for the governorship of New York and was in disgrace. He was ruined as a politician. He decided to get back at Mr. Hamilton. My former vice president, Aaron Burr, challenged George Washington's secretary of the treasury, Alexander Hamilton, to a duel in which said Mr. Burr murdered Mr. Hamilton. Now, I've never been a fan of Mr. Hamilton, but I hated to see Mr. Burr murder him. Being a jewel and being that Mr. Burr was never convicted, I referred to the incident as murder, for that is how the public perceived it. After this, Aaron Burr went to the ambassador from England to persuade the British to aid him in detaching Louisiana from the United States. This attempt at anarchy was unsuccessful. The British did not want to risk such an ordeal. However, Mr. Burr was undeterred. He began gathering friends in the West and in New Orleans. In Tennessee, he befriended General Andrew Jackson. Mr. Burr also had another interesting acquaintance, General James Wilkinson. Now, General Wilkinson was an employee of both the Spanish government and the United States government at the same time. <laughs> Also, he was originally a friend of Aaron Burr's. However, he felt that turning in his friends was more rewarding. He sent to me a personal letter detailing the events of the conspiracy. I immediately dispatched a reward for Mr. Burr's arrest. General Wilkinson signed the warrant. Colonel Aaron Burr, former Vice President of the United States and suspected, and suspected traitor, was going to invade, or capture New Orleans, invade the Western territories, and once those feats were accomplished, 
is going to invade Mexico and declare himself the emperor. The year was 1807. General Andrew Jackson was testifying on behalf of Aaron Burr, but stormed out of the room as soon as General Wilkinson arrived. She simply did the fact that General Wilkinson had returned to the rightful side of the law, was testifying against Colonel Burr. General Wilkinson's testimony revealed a ciphered letter written by Aaron Burr conferring with General Wilkinson about the events of the conspiracy. Aaron Burr was indicted by a grand jury. Now, only one other accomplice was indicted, Mr. Harmon Blennerhassett. Mr. Blennerhassett had helped to fund the conspiracy. Now, no matter the set bail, Aaron Burr was able to pay it. it. Frightened me that he had so many friends, especially in Chief Justice John Marshall. Mr. William Wirt of the prosecution gave a beautiful speech in defense of Mr. Blennerhassett while destroying that character of Aaron Burr. However, it was in vain. Both were acquitted on the charges of high treason. This left only the misdemeanor charge of being co-conspirators. Aaron Burr met bail for the third time. Upon trial, both men were again acquitted. The consequence was severe, for the public was outraged. All of us knew he was guilty. In his defense, some may say that I am the one who said, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them to another. I was declaring independence for 13 colonies from a despicable nation. In this great land of ours, one must simply ask that an amendment be passed. The unreasonable reasoning behind this man's actions was that he wanted complete control of the nation and was willing to take it by force. After the trial, Aaron Burr went to England to persuade the British to aid him in capturing Mexico. Some people never learn their lessons. Being denied the aforesaid aid, he ventured into Sweden and France. After several international failures, my former vice president decided to return to the United States. A hero? Or not a hero? That is the question. Alas, poor Aaron. I thought I knew him. He seemed so friendly towards me, yet secretly resented my entire administration. I wonder how history will remember this character. As a hero? Or as a traitor? As for me, I am enjoying retirement. I have more time to read. Excuse me. Upon his return to the United States, Aaron Burr married a wealthy widow by the name of Eliza Jumel. After he spent all of her money, she decided to divorce him. She hired an excellent lawyer by the name of Alexander Hamilton, Jr. Karma is an interesting thing. On the day the divorce was final, Colonel Aaron Burr, former Vice President of the United States and suspected traitor, died at the age of 81. The year was 1836. Ten years after the death of President Thomas Jefferson. The President would have been interested to see that history has remembered his Vice President as a traitor, Alexander Hamilton as a martyr, and the President himself, as the hero of a nation, placed high on a pedestal for all posterity.